So Ashes of Creation, the upcoming MMORPG that seems to be very ambitious, yet also promising, looks to have over 64 classes for us to choose from. Now of course, these classes are a combination of your base class, or primary archetypes, and your secondary class, or secondary archetypes. In a way, it's kind of like multiclassing in Dungeons & Dragons, but the main difference is that your secondary class doesn't give you new abilities. Instead, it enhances your current ones through augmentations. With that said, let's take a look at how classes will work in Ashes of Creation, from primary archetypes, secondary archetypes, and stats in the game. At the start, during character creation, you can choose between 8 archetypes. These archetypes will determine what role you are in the game. These primary archetypes or base classes can't be changed after character creation or mid-game. And they follow the Holy Trinity, so these roles will be Tank, Healer, or Damage. The primary archetype is arguably the most important. Whichever primary archetype you choose will determine which skills and abilities you have. For example, if you're a tank archetype, you'll get abilities like Absorb Bubble, Break Crowd Control, and a passive block that increases your block percentage. On the other hand, if you're a mage, you'll have spells and abilities like Blink, Ice Prison, and other mage spells. As you level up in Ashes, you will gain skill points. These skill points can be put into your various primary skills to rank them up. An example of this is the Ranger's Slice ability. At rank 1, it's a Cone Melee attack. If you put a skill point into it, at rank 2, it becomes a 360 degree Melee attack. If you upgrade it again, at rank 3, it will have a Bleed Damage Over Time damage when you do it. Another example is the Tank's Passive Block ability. At rank 1, it will simply increase your block percentage. At rank 2, it will increase block even more. And at rank 3, it has a chance to deal weapon damage on successful blocks, to help increase the tank's threat or aggro. Pretty cool stuff. How the classes are balanced is that each of the primary archetypes will be good at certain situations. For example, a fighter or rogue may be good at 1v1 PvP duels or matches, and mages could be pretty bad in those situations. But they may be far ahead of them when it comes to AoE and doing dungeons, or doing some crowd control. Similarly, mages may be good at dealing with trash mobs, but rangers are better for boss fights because they have the various bleed abilities, and they could do more damage over time with the abilities that they have. If you want a more in-depth look at each primary archetype and their primary skills, Stay tuned because I'll be making videos on that for all 8 primary archetypes. Now, if you want to make a, say, PvP focused mage or AoE focused ranger, you could. The way to do this is by augmenting the primary skills through your secondary archetypes, which brings us to the next section. At level 25, you can choose your secondary archetype to get your proper class. While the primary archetype gives you your skills and abilities, which are called primary skills, like fighters getting rush, which is basically charge in WoW, and mages getting blink, secondary archetypes give you augments. Now, there are a total of 64 combinations when it comes to classes, meaning there are 64 combinations by mixing primary archetypes and secondary archetypes. So the secondary archetype does not give you new skills, but it lets you put augments on your skills. Augments basically allow you to enhance and modify your abilities. For example, as a fighter, you have your rush ability, which allows you to take time to charge at an enemy and deal damage to them. Now that distance that you need to cover with the charge, it takes a little bit of time, and if the enemy moves out of the way, you can probably miss your attack. But if you take Mage as your secondary archetype, you would become a Spell Sword. Then, you can augment the Rush ability with the Mage's Escape ability, like for example Blink, and your Rush ability would teleport you to the enemy, eliminating the charge time of Rush. 
In addition to this modification to the mechanical aspect of the ability, you'll also get a new animation for that rush and blink combination. The augments available from the secondary archetypes you choose will enhance the abilities and role of your primary archetype. For instance, a mage secondary archetype has teleportation and elemental magic augments. These augments will be different whether you have a tank primary archetype or say a rogue primary archetype. For a tank mage, which would be a spell shield, the mage augments would be more focused on defense, crowd control, and survivability. Meanwhile, for a rogue, the mage augments would help the rogue's skills focus more on stealth, dealing damage, and dealing massive critical hits. Finally, augments change your primary skills both cosmetically and mechanically as well, making them better in one way or another. Each different augment will have a level requirement and certain number of skill points to activate. You can change your augments by talking to an NPC in a node that is a village level or higher. And to change your secondary archetype, you will need to go through a quest system or talk to the NPC in that node. Moving on to the stats in Ashes of Creation, there will be many different stats, which are Health, Power, Dexterity, Constitution, Willpower, Wisdom, Mentality, Physical Attack, Magical Attack, Block Chance or Percentage, Critical Hit, and Evasion. Now the progression of base stats. The race you pick will determine your base stats. These base stats will then grow according to the primary archetype you choose. Mind you, secondary archetypes don't affect the growth of your stats. Additionally, the gear you have will affect your stats and overall power by about 40-50%. to 50%. And since the combat in Ashes of Creation will be a blend and mix of tab targeting and action combat, there will be certain situations mainly in PvP, where you can outskill a certain player that has much better gear than you. Now that's pretty much it and all for now for the classes so far in Ashes of Creation. Stay tuned because I'll be doing many more Ashes of Creation videos in the coming weeks on the primary archetypes, races, and professions that we know so far. If you haven't already, Check out my video on the reasons why I'm excited for Ashes of Creation and why it looks so promising. That'll be all from me. I will see you all later.